Fred, do you want to welcome our group in today? Certainly. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our very first PR Masters meeting. Let's get a round of applause here. And coincidentally, it's also starting on the first day of the new Toastmaster year. So happy new year, everybody. And I wanted to show everybody here uh, something, something I did that we'd like everybody to participate in. This is something called Mentimeter. And basically, Lee would like to know what brings you to PR Masters tonight. The link is posted in the chat. If you guys would like to click on that, there's three questions in there, and or uh, three choices, and then you just basically answer, and it'll come up on the screen. So back over to you, Madam Toastmaster. All right, uh, everybody, just do the poll here and see what how we're doing at the beginning of our meeting, and. Let's have some fun. Is it working? Are people putting their answers in there? Working for me? Can y'all see the screen? Let me pull up the screen if you can't actually, see it. Actually, Fred, you're not sharing at the moment, so feel free to share your screen. Give me a, give me a second. That's what I was trying to pull up here. So let's, oh, hold on. I lost the Zoom. I lost you guys for a minute. Hold on a second, I lost you guys. There we go. Okay, so let me share the screen. Ah, hold on. It disappeared on me. Let me type it in. Okay, so now let's let me see if I can share the screen here. Okay. There's our results. Fifteen. To enhance repair skills, none just someone invited me and three for just curious. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and leave that up and I'll drop the, um, the link in the chat again for people who are just joining. Still have people coming in and five minutes till our start time. It looks like we have a number of people, of course, from Vancouver and Portland, Multnomah Village, but then we have a few like Ontario. Mammoth Falls, Lake of the Woods. Excellent. Hmm. Jennifer, our timer has arrived. Me and I recognize a lot of these people. Okay. Not all of them. 
you just saw the, the chart change, so I will definitely leave it up for Marin's suggestion. Is someone taking a screenshot of this meeting? Taking a video. Uh, it looks you know like what? Wait, we're going to up. Fred, I know you like to take screenshots, so I recommend that you forewarn everyone that you're going to do it, and that way they'll be ready and look like their best selves when you take that screenshot. So if you're going to do a screenshot, set up people to look good. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to take one with the screen. That's why I was asking if someone else was willing to do it, but I agree with what you said. I can do it for you. Okay. It's been one of my jobs all year long. Okay. All right. Anyone who doesn't want to be in this photo, please turn off your video. And otherwise, let's see, this is our first official meeting. So we're going to do that classic number one and on this photo. So if you can hold up a finger, go for it. I can see Bill's. I'm always watching. I'm always waiting for the delay on my computer too. So if you can hold up that number one finger. All right, I got a good percentage of you doing this. One, two, three. Thanks. Perfect. Oh, I missed a couple. Do it again. Lori's uh, finger came in late. I don't want her to feel like, oh, I got my finger up. One. Okay, I'm waiting for Lori and Joe on my screen and Michael and Dahlia. I see Elizabeth. Joe's my missing his finger. Adam's missing his finger. All right, one, two, three. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. If you're just coming in, Fred is running a Mentimeter, and we dropped the link in the chat, and it is a question that we like to start our meeting with, and it varies by who does the meeting. Our other question, if you want to drop it in the chat, is where you're coming in from this evening. We've had people from Ontario, Vancouver, Portland, next, uh, Lake of the Woods, Bangkok, Southern Oregon. Yes, Fred? from Bangkok in the chat. or it could be viewed as early. Welcome everyone. It's seven o'clock and I'm very excited to be the first president of the first day of our new chartered club, PR Masters. Yay, everybody, woo! It's been a whirlwind. We've come into existence in five months and it's just been so exciting. And I'm really thrilled to be part of this team and to get to know all of you and to welcome all you new people and hopefully have more people joining. So for now, uh, I'm gonna pass it on over to, oh wait, before I do that, I wanna give a chance to welcome a couple of our trio members that are here. We have PJ and we have Lori. And PJ, I've heard <laughs> words. So I'm gonna hand it over to PJ. Oh, I'm up already, huh? Okay. Yep, you're thank first you. on the docket. Thank, thank you, I wasn't quite ready for that. All right, uh, can I share my screen? 
As far as I Fred, know, you would you, Fred, would you stop sharing your screen? Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to need to get up what I want to share. Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk for just a moment before I share. Toastmasters International uh, realizes that we have uh, learned many new skills this past year with all of our online activities. To recognize some of these accomplishments, they created some new certificates that we can award to members of our district. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wasn't involved with the formation of PR Masters, but as I understand it, Eric Winger kind of started this when he made a Facebook page for Club VPPRs after he did a session at the Winter TLI. Is that, is that right? He, he, he kind of got this thing kicked off. Well, I think that demonstrates the need for this award. Let me share that. There we go. The, um, are you all seeing that now? Okay, did I make that big or did I just make it smaller? I think I just made it smaller, didn't I? No, oh, if I learned how to use my computer, where did it go? Oh, there, got to get back here. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so one of the awards they came up with is called Innovative Marketing for New Clubs Award. Well, I think starting a Facebook page is certainly innovative. So Mr. Eric Winger, I'm going to send you this certificate for innovative marketing. All right, as the story goes, yes, applause. As the story goes, Carissa Yang thought, hey, we have this group of people, let's start a club. So she and Marin got to work on it. The obvious certificate for them is one called Club Organization Award. So one for Carissa and one for Marin will be on their way to those folks. Next up, I heard there was a demo meeting. Takes a lot of people to put on a demo meeting, to organize it and to make it happen. And I understand that Jennifer Schmidt and Andrea Matthews were instrumental in doing that. Now, if I missed anybody, I apologize. But like I said, I wasn't there. I'm getting information from people saying that these individuals were key in helping make PR Masters happen. So I appreciate all their efforts. Next up, Adam joined the party. And I understand that he brought some technical support expertise in terms of Eventbrite and um, LinkedIn and that sort of thing. And I see Phyllis nodding her head there. Yes, it's always good to have people who understand those apps. You know, that iPhone advertisement a few years back that said, there's an app for that. Well, we have an award for that, the Technological Support Award. So there you go, Adam and everybody else, I will be sending these awards off to you. It takes a lot of people and a lot of work to start a club. And so thanks to all of you, thanks to all the new members who've joined. I look forward to great things from this club. You guys have a high bar. And what I would like to see is regular webinars and breakout sessions at TLIs, where y'all can share your knowledge and skills with other members and officers of the district so that we can all catch up with you and become experts in online marketing and PR. So thank you very much. I'm happy to be here tonight. I'm going to mute myself now and see how your first official meeting as a chartered club goes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, PJ. That was a lot of fun. It's great to get all these awards just all in yeah. one day. Love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, these are these are brand new. I was just uh, made aware of these recently, and uh, I think they're fabulous and recognize all of the effort that's gone into online meetings. We're all learning a lot. Okay. Thank you. All right, now it's time to introduce our first Toastmaster of our first meeting, and that will be Jennifer Schmidt. Jennifer has served as VP of PR for the New Horizons Toastmasters Club this past year where she's been a member since 2019. She's written several articles for Voices, which is District 7's digital magazine. In May, she was featured on the cover of Voices when she wrote about her contest experience earlier this year. Please help me welcome Jennifer Schmidt. Woo! 
Thank you, Andrea. It's an honor to be your Toastmaster for the first official meeting of PR Masters. Let's take this moment to applaud that achievement and recognize our new leadership team, Andrea, David, Marin, Adam, Phyllis, Carissa, and Matthew. Woo. Congratulations, we did it. I have been part of this group since the beginning and have enjoyed the ongoing support and fantastic ideas shared about public relations. Our club has members in several different countries, along with years of experience that helps all of us promote clubs and events. Great job, everyone. I love learning from all of you. Now it's time to get this meeting started and what better place to start than by introducing the timer, Emily Romano, who will explain her role this evening. Thank you, Jennifer, and congratulations, everyone. As your timer tonight, I will keep her I'll give three separate timer reports, one after prepared speeches, one after table topics, and one after events. We have an eight to 10 minute speech tonight. So I'll display a green card at eight minutes, a yellow at nine, and red at 10. And for Phyllis's five to seven minute speech, I'll display green at five, yellow at six, and red at seven. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Emily. In Toastmasters, evaluation is key to discover what works well and how we can make our presentations stronger. Our first evaluator tonight is Bill Mayer, who will be evaluating Michael's speech. Bill, please tell us what your focus will be tonight as Michael's evaluator. Well, oh, thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. Michael has asked me to pay, pay special attention to his use of slides since he's working on his mastery presentation pathway. I'm also going to, according to his request, also evaluate his speech and how the speech is as a speaker, but I'm going to also kind of see how they intertwine with his slides and his speaking and we'll see how it all folds together. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Bill. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg will deliver an informative speech explaining how to market your club by optimizing meeting videos for the number two search engine, YouTube. Please welcome Michael as he presents YouTube optimization to promote Toastmasters clubs, districts, and yourself. To everybody that's watching this on YouTube right now, go ahead and hit that thumbs up icon to give this, uh, this video a like. Give us a, a comment telling us what kind of PR questions do you have, or just let us know what you think about this video. And please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you get notified anytime PR Masters drops a new video. Madam Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. When I first attended a PR Masters meeting, I thought, man, I do not know what I can contribute to this club. And then I went to go look at some of the old meeting videos. And I saw this. This is, or was, I, I, said, I saw that there were some more videos recently uploaded, but this is what I came across when I saw the PR Masters YouTube page. According to a Forbes article in 2017, YouTube is the second highest ranked search engine. Meaning if people do not find what they're looking for on Google, then they go to YouTube for answers. A couple things you should know about me. Number one, I'm a stand-up comedian. I have kidney disease and I'm on dialysis. So I wanted to spread some word about that stuff. So I made my own YouTube channel. 
and I also went to YouTube Creator Academy, where I'm going to be, sh where I'm going to, where I got all the information that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Don't take my word for it. Go to YouTube Creator uh, CreatorAcademy.youtube.com, and you can watch all the same videos and read all the same articles that I did to learn about how to optimize YouTube. So when you're anytime you're talking about optimization, you want to try to hone in on a keyword, and you need to do some keyword research. I use two tools, vidIQ and TubeBuddy. These are both Google Chrome extensions. So they plug into Google Chrome and they give you some enhanced tools. I like vidIQ personally, it's my favorite one. And here's a little example of what vidIQ looks like on a YouTube search page. In this case, I searched for Toastmasters and it gives me this, this meeting, this radar, uh, this uh, meter right here, it tells me this has a score of 57 according to vidIQ. What that means is it's got a 62 for search volume. That's the amount of people that are searching for this search term. Um, but it's it's uh, it's pretty it's medium here for competition. Uh, the one big thing, if you notice, the first two videos are from Toastmasters International. Toastmasters International. Obviously, that's what you want to come up if you're searching for Toastmasters. They're a very high authority channel on YouTube for the search term Toastmasters because that's what people are searching for. If you search for public relations, however, it comes up with a search, a, re, a meter of 68 because there's still a good search volume, but the, the competition is very low. If you look at the first two, uh, the first two uh, videos that come up here, who are these people? I've never heard of Sketch 22 or Melanie McNaughton. So this is a keyword that we can exploit and optimize for. The next keyword you'll notice is dialysis jokes. And this has a pretty poor score of 32. It's got a decent volume, but very high competition. But look who ranks number one for dialysis jokes, even above John Oliver from HBO. How did I do it? I tripled my keyword strength. That means you put your keywords in the title, the description, and the tags. In the title, you want to load your keywords to the front of the title. So these are the keywords that I'm going for, comedian jokes about dialysis. It's also important to write a robust title so that you might accidentally rank for keywords that aren't the specific ones that you're going for. Uh, it can actually help to give people uh, more of an idea of what your video is about. And that's very important because you don't wanna trick people into watching your video. If you do that, they're gonna click on it and then they're gonna click right off. And that's gonna drop your, your video down the search rankings. In the description, it's also important to write a robust description. And you wanna, again, load your keywords towards the front of the description. Ideally in the first paragraph, and even here I have it in the first sentence, ending this first sentence on dialysis. I also just like to put, please like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. This helps YouTube know that the audience is engaging with your video, which also helps push you up the search rankings. I also put some contact information in here. A lot of people do like to click on the description to open it up and see what else. Sometimes you can put uh, links to other videos in here as well. I also put some hashtags. You can add up to 15 hashtags in case people are searching for hashtags. Uh, if you add more than 15 hashtags, YouTube will say that you have no hashtags. So it's important to make sure you have less than 15 hashtags. Tags are different than hashtags. This is a metadata that you enter into the, the back end of, of YouTube. And vidIQ has these cool little numbers that show you where you rank for certain search terms. I like to use long string search terms, which is more than one word, because as you can see, I have the word dialysis in here but this competition for dialysis is so strong that I don't rank for that. But dialysis jokes or jokes about dialysis, I come up number one. So that's, that's good. Uh, you have up to 500 characters that you can put in the tags. So I recommend just loading it up with as many long string tags as possible. End screens and cards help viewers find your other videos. And the end screen is a, a screen that shows up at the end of your video and you can, this is a, a funny face that I made. 
And, and you can add up to four elements. You can, these, these are two, this is a video, this is a playlist. And if you hover over this, uh, this is just a screenshot, but if you hover over this, it'll, it'll bring up a card that allows you to subscribe to my channel. And then I created this, this fun graphic. Uh, it's pretty low quality, but it, look, it looks better on YouTube. I've got my socials down here, my, my pretty little face poking out from behind the video. So that just tells, thanks people for watching and hopefully gets them to click on one of these other videos to continue watching my videos. Uh, this is another video I made, Dialysis, the song. And this, this little information icon up in the top right corner, if you hover over that, it'll open up a card. So you can add cards, which will allow you to link pl a playlist, a video, or somebody else's YouTube channel. The channel page is also very important because a lot of people will go to your channel page and they'll see this and then they'll say, okay, well, there's, these guys don't have much to offer. Uh, if, if you look at my channel page, I've got, I've got an, uh, a, a profile photo, I've got a cover photo, I've got my socials linked up here too. And I've got this, it's, a, it's called a channel trailer. So you can just put any video up there. This is one of my most popular videos and this shows people what I'm about. So this is the, the video that I chose to represent my channel as the channel trailer. Next, I just have a bunch of playlists. Uh, I would show you, you could, you could like scroll up and down, but I didn't wanna like, like risk, risk any problems with the internet. So I just, I just took screenshots. So you can just scroll down and you can see, uh, you can see all my, my different playlists that I have. So I've got just the uploads and I've got my original songs, stand-up comedy, uh, Mariachi El Gabacho, and then you also have channel tags. So this helps people when they're searching for certain things to find your channel. Your channel will come up in the search as well. So I definitely recommend adding channel tags. I have some recommendations for PR masters, which is what I focused on in this, in this presentation. I recommend just breaking up your videos. Definitely post a full meeting video so that if somebody wants to go back and watch the full meeting, they can do that. But I also recommend chopping out the two videos and then using the title of those video of the, of the speeches for those videos. For instance, this speech, YouTube Optimization 4, is opt already optimized for YouTube. I think that's got a pretty good score. Like you can, you can search, for, you can have YouTube optimization, optimization to promote. Like there's a couple different keywords that you can rank for with that. You have the Dear PR Masters videos, any mini engagements, mini table topics. I recommend posting those as separate videos. Uh, triple the keywords on all those, add end screens and cards, and add a custom thumbnail. Marin's Canva thumbnails would work perfectly for all these. Uh, for, the, for the channel, I recommend adding a photo and a channel and a channel channel cover cover photo. Uh, for playlists, one thing I want to say about playlists really quick is a playlist is great because Playlists come up in searches just as much as videos. So you can optimize the, the title and the description of the playlist to come up just as much. So I recommend creating all these playlists, adding channel tags, or you can let me do it. I'll do it for you. Go to settings, permissions, invite. I'll give whoever has the admin rights my, my YouTube email. You can add me and I'll let me do it for you. I would like to help out. So everyone, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to register to be an organ donor. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much for that informative presentation. That was fabulous. A lot of tips for our club specifically. Really appreciate that. I will now introduce our mentee master, David who will be asking for feedback from the audience. It's, it's instant feedback. And please explain how this will work, David. What I hope to explain is that if you go to the link that showed up in the chat, that we'll be able to see the presentations. And, and uh, so it should be interactive. I'm waiting for my PC to load it. Okay. So as, as you click on it, uh, we should be able to share the screen. Oh, 
Uh, I cannot share screen while somebody else is sharing the screen. Okay. All right, so we'll try that again. Now I've lost my screen. Okay. Did you post the link? I'm not seeing it. Uh, it's in, I put it in chat. Um, okay. I saw it there. I filled it in. Okay. Did you get it back? I'll do it again. Uh, somebody else was there it is. posting some. David, are you using the same link as Fred? I I don't know what that means. Um, Go ahead and drop the link that you have again. I I did because it didn't it didn't show up for me. The code's also at the top. Of the oh, um, okay. It's supposed to go to everyone. That's my mistake. Okay. Okay. That looks like it's working. There we go. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. It's, I'm doing a presentation and it's not it's not showing. I mean I keep seeing it. Does anybody else see it? I see it. Move the uh, move the window away from the application. Got thank you for your participation. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what that is, but there we are. Optimized search engine. Okay. So now it's now it's at least showing something. Wonderful. So this this is interactive. So as people put in um, their their pieces of information, whatever words word or phrases they want to use, then it should show up interactively. Okay. Uh, it's it's a little it's a little bit slow today. Okay. <laughs> that's that's all right. Okay. We get a good idea there. And all right. As people fill it in, I'm sure you'll get more responses there. So we'll keep working on oh, that. And uh, and uh, okay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. It's a good Thank try. You. And we get the idea, and you'll probably get more responses. All right. Now I will introduce Matthew Douglas, who is our second evaluator this evening. He will be evaluating Phyllis Harmon's speech. Uh, what will you be looking for in her presentation, Matthew? Thank you very much. Phyllis is going to be speaking to us tonight. Her project is, is intended for a member to learn or review research methods and then present a well-organized, well-researched speech. In particular, Phyllis is going to be talking to us tonight about identifying who our audience is. She's looking for ways from us as feedback to improve her message so that she can hone it and share it with others. The title of her speech is, Who is Your Public? Phyllis Harmon. Oh, wait, one more moment here. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, former District 7 Public Relations Manager Phyllis Harmon once helped an author launch their book on marketing. When she asked the author, who is your target audience? She told, she was told everyone. Tonight, Phyllis shares how deciding who your public is will increase sales or attract visitors to your club. Please welcome Phyllis as she presents, who is your public? Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Toastmasters International's most recent statistics show that there are 16,200 clubs in 145 countries across the globe. That means that there are around 364,000 members who are 
learning and growing so that they can take what they learn to their audiences and make a difference. Wow. Toastmasters and we as members of Toastmasters should be very proud of those statistics. But let me ask you a question. How does knowing those statistics help you in your club? Well, I don't think they help at all, really. If you tell someone, did you know that, and spout the statistics, you're gonna see the glaze come over their eyes because that's really not what they care about, is it? They wanna know about you and about your club. And so that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. Some thoughts that I have on how we can change that paradigm so that you become the star of your own show and your words will inspire people to not only talk about your club, but to join you and increase your membership. These are the same skill sets that you can use when you are marketing yourself, your small business, or any political thoughts that you might have that you want to share. So let's, let's dive into this, not real deep because of the time commitment, but let's at least peel back the cover. So first off, my question to you is who is your target market? I've mentioned that a time or two on some of these meetings. You need to know who you are talking to in order to raise their interest. Now, in my introduction, you heard about the, the budding author who wanted me to help her find places where she could market her book, get on television, radio, somewhere where she could sell that book. And I asked her, fine, I'm more than willing to help you with that. Who's your audience? Everyone, she says, everyone should read my book. Oh, was my response. How do you market to everyone and hit anyone? In my opinion, if you don't know who your market is, you're going to attract no one. So here's a thought. The first thing you need to do is step back, step back from yourself and ask, who do I want to attract? I think that PR Masters is a fine example that anybody can take a look at. It drew people together who were interested in learning more about public relations. They targeted people who needed that skill set? A fine model for what I'm talking about. Now, with my author, hers was a book on marketing. You'd have thought she knew that you have to target your audience. So I did ask her to step back. And what she came up with is well, my market is probably people in their mid career, maybe up to about the time they want to retire. Okay, that's a little better, but not specifically or specific enough. And I find this is the same thing with the club that we've got. Who do you want to draw into your club? And what's the common answer? Everyone. Oh, come on, guys, you can do better than that. What I would suggest is that you take a look at your current membership. Who are they? What are their interests? What do they do outside the walls of Toastmasters? Because that's your core group that can help you draw in other people. In one of my clubs, there are a bunch of car enthusiasts. They get together on the weekend and they pull the hoods up and they're in there digging around in the motors. Well, 
perhaps, well, if they're out there digging around in those motors, they could be talking about Toastmasters to those people. They would be a fine group to draw into that particular club. As with PR masters, we draw people in as we talk about public relations and what we do. Cool. All right. But beyond that, who are you targeting? If you stick your heads outside the proverbial doors of your club, who's your community? Who's around you? Who can get to you? And of course, with Zoom nowadays, you can get to everyone, can't you? But you still need to target that market. My suggestion is to start drawing a list, make a list of everyone that you come in contact with. What are their interests? What do they want to accomplish? What's their pain point? Why is it that they would be attracted to you? What do you offer them that is different than club X, Y, and Z? Because they can go to any community club and get basically the same thing. What makes your club unique? If you know what makes your club unique because of your core group of people in that club, you now have the basis for bringing in your community. Determine who your community is. Key on the skills that your club already has, their interests. Do you have a bunch of musicians? Why not bring in more? Start there. Start with who you know that would be interested in what you have to share. What is their pain point and how are you going to help them solve it. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much, Phyllis. That was wonderful. Very specific. Can't market to every single person. <laughs> All right. I was going to go back to David to see if we could do a second poll on Phyllis's presentation. Well, we'll give it a, we'll give it a try. All right. Did you drop it in the chat or people? Uh, yeah, I, I did. And it just disappeared on me. I mean, I see it. Okay. There we go. Well, there we go. All right, so that part's working now. <laughs> Wonderful. Filling it out too. So I've submitted one and it worked for me. I hope it's working for others. Oh, it's, it's, it's interesting and informative. Okay. David, is it possible to switch the screen that you're sharing to the one that's the Mentimeter screen? I, I do not understand the question. Uh, we're seeing like the links and such. Okay, so I was doing the share screen and... Did you, did you get any responses? It's, 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 it's not... It's not yeah, it's not showing up. Um, oh, oh, oh! There you go. Okay, so it was just slow, slow getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it takes okay. a little time. So, so we have we have three levels of Minty Masters. There's a Minty Master Meister. That's me, first time. Then there's a Minty Mat. And that's somebody who's done who's done this more than once. And then we have the Minty Meter Maestro, and that's Adam Das. That really looks great. Thank you. I learned yeah. from the best. Uh, that's Marn Zero. <laughs> it's it's fun though. It's fun to see that instant feedback. Thank you for doing that, David. All right. Now we go to our first timers report because uh, it's nice to know our timing right away. Emily, will you please give us the timing of each presentation? Certainly. 
Michael's presentation was 10:29, and Phyllis 7:23. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. All right. Now I will be turning the meeting over to Andrea for our club business. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, once again, we're just so excited to be having our very first meeting as an official club. And it's it's been a wonderful journey. We Some of us met in a PLI meeting and decided to get together and have a support club. And from there we grew into a club. And now we're flying in July with 25 members. It's pretty awesome. So now I'd like to hand it over to Carissa, who's gonna talk about our business and give us an overview. Thank you, Carissa. <clears throat> Thank you, Andrea. Can I have a thumbs up if you can see my screen, please? Wonderful. Yes, and thank you so much for PJ and Laurie being here with that wonderful um, announcements in the beginning. <laughs> We're so honored to have you here. And so this this just a couple of slides, kind of a retrospective and a status update. As Andrea mentioned, originally a group of VPPRs met at her club officer training for VPPRs and winter TLI put on by District 7. So we do have Andrea to thank for this. Those VPPRs who are who connected at that club officer training decided that connection was so valuable they wanted to keep meeting. And that's when I heard about this group. They were calling themselves a support group at the time. And as PJ noted, Eric Winger had started up a Facebook group and coordinated us getting together. Well, I joined in January and I said, why don't we think about forming a club where Toastmasters were all interested in the same subject of public relations? and you're planning on meeting regularly anyway. So a Toastmaster format will give us more structure. So we met once a month, February, March, April, May, June, five demo meetings. And much like today, we had at least 35 attendees each meeting. So encouraging. We strategized how we would communicate among ourselves as well as to the public to invite more people to our meetings. So we did use Facebook extensively for promotion. We used Slack for internal communications, dialogue among the group. We established our own club Gmail account. To, we wanted to accept charter member applications, so that was an address to send those to. I started a website for us and I believe it was David Shehorn who said, don't you guys have a LinkedIn page yet? <laughs> so we started that up too. And here we are. This is what we are now. We came all this way, ramped up those charter member applications. So we submitted on June 10, 23 charter members. No problems with that charter application. And I want to acknowledge that PJ and Lori both reviewed that carefully before I submitted that to World Headquarters, catching a few mistakes or at least clarifying some things. And they had no issues with that application. So I do credit everybody's work on this. Thank you so much. And I'm just amazed we have such great representation, 17 clubs, six states, two countries, six districts, and five regions. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> That's my update. As we sail away. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Now it 
We'll go back to Andrea for some official voting. Okay, excellent. Yes, we do have a new member that's joining us, uh, two new members. We have Zeta and Deborah that are joining our club. So we'd like to take a vote. Everybody who approves it, put up, put a thumbs up, use the reaction and put a thumbs up. Everybody who approves of Zeta, thumbs up. Looks like we're pretty, okay. Anybody say aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. I mean, aye. Yeah. Aye. Cool. All right. I think it's unanimous. Um, yay. We have a new member, Zeta. <laughs> Woohoo. Welcome, Zeta. We're really happy to have you. We enjoyed your speech that you gave us here. And now we also have another new member, Deborah. Everybody in favor of Deborah joining our club, put your thumbs up and say aye. 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 Excellent, Deborah. Welcome. We're really happy to have you in our club. And that does bring us up to 25 people. Congratulations, PR masters. Woohoo. <laughs> All right, and now I'd like to hand it back to Jennifer. Thank you, Andrea. Now that we've voted in two new members, when, after we vote someone in, we move fast here, which means Zeta is jumping in to lead our next segment <laughs> as a new, brand new member. She's already being put to work for Show Your Page. Please welcome Zeta. Uh, how many how many minutes uh, do I have to show the page? You have eight. eight. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can I share screen, please? So this is our website. Uh, actually, it's an older website. As I said, uh, we are. We call ourselves now as Unified Toastmaster because we were the product of three or four clubs in South, uh, Southern Oregon, Medford, Ashland. I live in Kalamath Falls. So I was wondering that we can use, you know, how we can improve our website. Any kind of feedback that you can give us, we will appreciate it. And I will bring it to the officers of my club so we can make all decision on what we need to do. I've been planning to rebound this and I think the person who did this did a good job and, and it works for us right now, but we need to go with the trend. So I'm gonna scroll it and see what do you guys think? Am I going too fast? This is without me logging in. It's just the first user interface that you'll see once you Google Unified Toastmaster. And this is what will pop up. Now, I was wondering what is, so I'll go back again. Zeta, I was wondering, can you show me where the contact us button is? Uh... <laughs> I have to log. I, this is I'm logging here. This is the one that I'm logging in. Let me show you the one without logging in. And it's almost the same, but right here, meeting information and contact us. Okay, so okay. this is maybe just the technical writer in me, but I would recommend matching the case of the contact us in the on the sidebar to the to the contact us in the top where it's where it's giving directions. Right here. Yeah, so where it okay. says use contact us, uh -huh. you have it in lowercase up at the top, and then on the left, it's it's a, up there, both capitalized. Oh, one. Mm, that you got a good point. So shall I scroll it again for you guys, or is that enough? Well, you can scroll it again, and then um, 
maybe we could uh, the, on with suggestions like mm -hmm. different suggestions you know what what stands out that really captures your attention and and things that could be a little stronger yeah so is that enough for you guys to give me some comment or recommendation if anyone would like to share, would you please start hitting the reaction button with the raised hand and that will help us to identify that you would like to speak. I, I don't see everybody because of the shared screen. So if you guys want to just speak up. Uh, I would appreciate that. Is, is that okay or? I'll help you out, Zeta. PJ, okay. you have your hand raised first on my screen. Yes, thank you. The first thing that occurs to me is you changed, you combined a couple of clubs and changed the name to Unified Toastmasters. And your picture there is lovely, smiling people. I've heard that it's always good to have pictures of people on your website so that people can identify these or other human beings that I'm talking to here. But your banner says University Toastmasters Club. I recommend that you get a new banner <laughs> so that you can match your picture on your homepage there. Okay. The, the name on your banner matches the name of your club. Okay. All right. Okay. That is that is an excellent idea because next meeting we're going to have an officer's meeting. And this will be very helpful for us, for our club. Yes, good. Okay. Ada, your next hand raise on my screen is Andrea. Okay. I just want to echo what PJ was saying about the, the wonderful picture with all the people. That's very lively and it makes it look like a really fun club. So that's, that's great. And I would make sure you have another picture that's just as lively and fun. <laughs> Can we use, uh, let me ask you guys a question. Can we use a Zoom picture? Because we never met in person. We're, we're always been in, in Zoom. Uh, yes, I'll answer that. <laughs> yeah, we use them in my club. I tell people when I'm taking pictures so they have the opportunity to turn off their camera. And ultimately, I help them look great in their picture. But you can definitely show the club as it is today. Deanna, you also have your hand raised. Deanna, do you want me to help you get off mute? My feet. My feet. My feet. Oh. Yeah, you might be saying that the addition of music might be nice. I'm not certain. If I got that wrong, feel free to write it in the chat. But I think that's what I heard. Any more Fred Bergeron. Fred Bergeron has his hand up as well, Zeta. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. You pronounced that right, Marin. I noticed on the page it says, join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. for an online meeting. Is that a clickable link to go to Zoom? Or, or were you going to put a Zoom link separately? I really don't know because I'm not the creator, but I can try, let me see right now. <laughs> no, you have. Yeah, use it if you're gonna put so something like it, it so, a yeah. link and I make mean, it a clickable link. I and didn't I was, mention that. Uh -huh. I was also gonna ask, is your you can go in there and update your your officer list, even though people won't see them. Mm -hmm. But in there and then maybe put a zoom picture of your officers like below the, the main picture. With the name. 
the new picture of the officer goes into the, uh, let me see here, goes to uh, when you log in only, and there, yeah, is a direct, there is a directory. Yeah, I'm talking about for the general public to see if you wanted them to know, like someone that's trying to, you know, like if the first person they probably want to contact the president, uh -huh. you know, they'll, they'll see the officers right there. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you, Marin. Thank you. Beta, next up would be Bill Mayer. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Zeta. Uh, this is in the lines of what Fred was sharing about access to your online meeting. We've had a few discussions in our club of just providing the Zoom address and password right on our webpage so that people find it right away. Um, it's a little different than clicking a link. The link might work, might not work, whatever. But that's another option to help people easily get to your club is to as easily as possible provide the inf provide the zoom uh link and meeting information as easily as possible um but i do like the picture but th as far as and to reiterate what what Marin was saying about the zoom picture we're all we all expect that it's not going to be unusual or you know people aren't going to think oh wow these guys are still on zoom we're all still on zoom so i think that's going to be a very good picture to provide for your website okay Thank you. Next up is Carissa Yang. Yang. Carissa. Hi, thank you, Maren. And thank you, Zeta, for sharing your page. I had a couple thoughts. Um, you say you meet at 7 p.m. and you meet online, but it's not necessarily clear what time zone you're in because everyone's looking for meetings online now. So you might add what time zone you're in in case somebody from outside the area encounters your site. And you might make it clear who is your public because now that we're online, would you welcome people from outside your area? It's not that clear to me whether you would or not. And it's not clear to me. It's clear to me that you're meeting online now, but will you continue to meet online? Because that would matter to your audience if they're distant. So I would like to see those things cleared up. Um, I think that would be helpful. So shall we say uh, everyone is invited or? If that's true, you might need to ask leadership, is everyone invited regardless of how far they are? Are you going to always meet online? In other words, are you sometimes yeah. meet, are you gonna move back into meeting in person? Because really? the, we are planning to do hybrid okay because well, we came from different region it takes me an hour and a half to go to a medford meeting which i i started going there and i tried to do some veterans medical appointment for my husband therapy in medford grocery shopping those master meeting that's how i started because there was no there there was no club or there's no club here in climate fall so sure well then that's a feature you want to promote if mm -hmm. you will keep meeting online so okay. that includes more people then so okay thank you yes you're welcome i believe your last person for feedback this evening will be phyllis Harmon. phyllis thank you a thought for you is First off, does your club schedule the speakers at least a week ahead of time? Yes. Well, every Tuesday it hasn't changed. In the last several months, we meet on Tuesday. Okay, so why don't you take the opportunity to not have just a static picture, but a picture of the upcoming speakers that you can then promote them out into your community to draw more people to your meeting. That way it, it constantly is changing. It takes a little bit of work. I know I've been doing it, but at least you get your speakers out there and people get to know your members better and they look forward to those speeches. Just a thought. Good idea. Thank you. I like that. I need to collaborate more to our webmaster. 
So I will talk to him. Thank you so much. That is very helpful. So is that about the time that I have left? Okay, thank you so much, Marin. Thank you for helping. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Zeta. That was a great job. Thank Difficult. you for the help. Thank you. Everybody's really helpful here. It's wonderful. Difficult PR situations require expert advice. What better way to get that advice than asking dear PR masters? Please welcome Adam Doss as he introduces our next segment, Dear PR Masters. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. If you recollect uh, when Carissa was talking about the club business, one of the things she mentioned was it started off as a support group, a mastermind, right? And just because we have chartered, we don't want to get rid of that. It's still a support group. It's still a mastermind. So before I get into the actual question, which is the meat of today's section, I want to briefly talk about Dear PR Masters. Most of you are pro probably familiar with Dear Abby. It was a section, I'm not from the US, but I believe it was a section in a US magazine. Uh, I mean, I was not born and raised here. I live in Portland right now. So think of it as uh, if you have a PR problem and you want uh, combined brain power, the combined uh, uh, you want to you want to benefit from the combined knowledge and expertise of this mastermind, which is PR masters. This is the section. You pitch a problem, and this awesome group of people come with uh, solutions. And believe it or not, actually, when I joined this group, I joined through a non-traditional PR masters meeting. They call it a planning meeting, and uh, it turned into a 39-minute therapy session for Adam. So I just love this group of people. So. I pretty much decided I'm definitely joining this group moving forward. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to the meat of today's problem. Dear PR Masters, I keep hearing people talk about how awesome the Toastmasters mentorship system is. Our club even delivered a speech, or sorry, our club coach delivered a speech where we explicitly put out the offer to mentor our club members. But we're not seeing any responses. No one is making use of the mentorship program, the Toastmasters mentorship program. Is there anything we can do from a PR perspective to demonstrate the value of mentorship? Maybe share success stories? The goal is not just to have internal members make better use of these opportunities, of these mentorship opportunities, but also use it as a PR strategy to attract new members. But I'm clueless how to go about this. Please help, anxious Adam opening it up to the audience for 45 seconds to a minute response. And I'll ask for our timer, Emily, to help me out with that. So, okay, opening it up to the floor. Okay, I see Bob Leach, your hand up. <clears throat> Thank you, I'd like to give some input on that. Just a, a thought and a suggestion. My very first club was in, um, Northern California, uh, Southern Marin, I forget the numbers. It's been a few years, I've been Toastmaster for a while. When I joined the club, they had a very strong mentoring program. And as I was introduced to what Toastmasters was at the meeting, they made an assumption that everyone who would join the club would also be assigned a mentor and then would meet with the mentor because it was introduced to me that way i thought well that's just that's part of the culture that's how it works and it was also uh, very helpful very warm i sat met with my mentor we talked about what toastmaster was and goals uh, i was surprised when i joined other clubs to find out that that wasn't the culture that that was only particular to that club but it was very successful and of course, that could be um, uh, differentiated uh, by club, but I would seriously uh, put that out for consideration. Uh, 
a quick follow-up question to Bob. Uh, wouldn't it be deemed pushy if we just assign someone a mentor? Just thought on that. Or I'm sorry, was that question to me? Yeah. Like, would it be considered pushy to us just to assign someone a mentor? Or we typically leave it to them to decide if they want to take it up. Um, my recollection is that, um, you know, they, they, kind of, they went through a list and then it was uh, part of the process was, okay, here's who we have available, but very much consider that, hey, you know, sometimes other people are better fit. So why don't you meet, get together? And if it's not a good fit, no problem, we'll find somebody else. I believe that the person who I was assigned to uh, was a good fit right off the bat. And just for them to express that also helped my anxiety level to uh, allow me to feel more warm towards the person who was actually assigned. Got it, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Zeta? What I can share only is through my experience when I was a BP ed in Central Coast California Club and we have a new member, I will always have that relationship, build up that relationship with the, uh, with the new member. I said, I would ask if she wants or he wants a mentor. And if not, I will try to assign that I think will fit a little bit, but so it's just a trial. Can I assign you to this person? If it doesn't work, then you can pick your own mentor. I pick my own mentor. Without my mentor, I won't be here today in Toastmaster because I was clueless what I'm gonna do. And I got so many things going on. I was teaching, I was taking care of my mom and everything else, but she was very patient to me. So I think you should announce it in a club. If they, need, if they think somebody they fit to be their mentor, they can ask or the VP ed or other officers in the club can assign that person to, to a mentor because it's very important. Without a mentor, you won't see me here today. I probably quit a long time ago. <laughs> and so I know the benefit. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Zaira. Maren? Uh, PR perspective, how do we promote mm, mentoring from a PR perspective and how can, each of the leadership team positions play a role in PR from their role. So as a VPM, I'm thinking to myself, well, I just interviewed a fellow Toastmaster about mentoring and we actually interviewed each other. Too bad we didn't record it. We could have grasped clips from that and sent them out through social media to encourage mentoring. From my perspective, no one talked to me about mentoring. So three years ago, I started having more mentors, but that wasn't started early for me. There's all sorts of reasons for that. It could happen. But having these discussions publicly about the value of mentoring, or even telling a story like I was a terrible mentee when I started, but there was real value in having someone who checked on me could be a way to start that topic with new members coming in or even visitors who are like, oh, maybe I could have a mentor in Toastmasters. There's my pitch for tonight. Awesome, thank you, thank you, Mar. Okay, we have Andrea next. I would think about this from an internal PR point of view. The way we do it in Portlandia Club is as soon as a person has completed their icebreaker speech, we ask them who they would like to have as their mentor. We have the vice president of education reach out to them and say, now you've been in the club for a bit, who do you think, who do you feel rapport with? Who would you like to have as your mentor? And then we get permission from that person, making sure they don't already have two or three mentees and uh, we connect them. And if they do have a few mentees, then we ask them if they would be able to work with a different person. And so that's how we run it in our club. And, and I feel like that's, important to do internal PR to uh, retain membership. Thank you. Thank you. And Toastmaster, sorry, I'm gonna take a last one. David? David, you're muted. Yep. What, what I'd like to propose kind of puts those all together. So you assign a buddy and the buddy helps the person 
with the first icebreaker and then helps them find a mentor. But, but the buddy works, the two buddies work together with the VP uh, education to find the right mentor for them. And then, to, you know, be sure and explain that, that a mentor doesn't have to be a permanent mentor. It can be for three months, it can be for six months, but it's good to rotate mentors every now and then. Personally, I've had about five mentors uh, and I, I'm currently mentoring three different people in, in my home club. So I, I believe in the buddy up, then mentor up. Awesome. Back to you. Thank you so much. Lots of really great insights and feedback. Really appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's get back to our Toastmaster, Jennifer. Back to you. Thank you. Adam, that was wonderful. And appreciate everybody's responses. Very thoughtful there. All right, now it's time for our second timers report. Emily, how did we do with the timing of Show Your Page and Dear PR Masters? We did okay. We got lots of people speaking opportunities. I'll go down the list quickly. PJ, 41 seconds. Andrea, 31. Deanna, 45. Fred, one minute. William, 53 seconds. Carissa, one minute, 15, and Phyllis, 53. That was show your page. Doing the best I could because there were some conversations. So I tried to time only the speakers portion. For Dear PR Masters, Adam's intro was two minutes, 31 seconds. Bob, your first answer, one minute, 21, and the second, 39. Zeta, a minute, 11. Marin, a minute, Seven, Andrea, 50 seconds, and David, also 50 seconds. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Emily. Appreciate your timely response. All right. Now it's part, time for the evaluation portion of our meeting. And I will be turning over the microphone to our general evaluator this evening, Andrea, who will introduce our fabulous evaluation team. Thank you so much, Jennifer. First up, we have evaluator Bill, who will be reporting on the speech by Michael. Over to you, Bill. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrea. Michael, great speech. Really timely, really important for our club to hear. You obviously have a lot of passion and a lot of information and knowledge about the subject, which made this something that I was really looking forward to seeing. You had a really strong start, which was wonderful. You had a good background. And one of the things that you did that I really like is you kind of angled yourself. And so your gestures were a little bit more interesting. Your profile was a little more interesting. I like that. Your gestures were great, as I said. You had a couple of double clutches. I'm not sure if that's something that happens to you? I don't think so. Maybe it was when you were dealing with the slides in the presentation and that kind of thing. Just something a little bit that I noticed just a couple of times. As I mentioned, the topic was really, really spot on. And it's obvious you know a lot about the topic. And I think that may have caused a little bit of difficulty for somebody like me. Now, I'm not unknowledgeable about YouTube. I managed to a degree the YouTube channel for my school. So I know some of the things that you talked about, but I think some of the terminology you used may go past your audience if you're not careful. Keyword, that was brought through as you described what you did for the channel. Video SEO, I still have a hard time figuring out what SEO means by the time I have to catch up to the speaker, so be careful of that. End screen cards, channel, channel page, all of these things that are very critical to understanding how to use YouTube and optimize YouTube for promotion, I think needed a little bit more explanation description. You had a slide that I didn't think was needed and it was when Google comes in or YouTube comes in as the number two search engine. Okay, it was mentioned in your introduction. It could have just mentioned it as a speech. You didn't really need a slide to make that point. And I'm also wondering too about how to put this together in a storyline kind of format. 
I felt like I was a little bit jumpy. All the information was great. And I'm really glad that you ended with some really strong practical advice for PR masters. That was really great. And I think some of us actually had a sigh of relief when you said, you know what, let me do it. I'll do it for you, not a problem. And some of us probably thought, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. I will have you do it. And that's a good thing to do. And it kind of ties into the mentoring conversation we had. Maybe you want to mentor somebody in the club to help optimize the YouTube channel for this club. Great gestures, great voice, great background, great speech, great topic. I can't wait for your next speech. Back to you, Andrea. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much, Bill. Fantastic. That was very helpful feedback. All right, now we've got evaluator Michael or Matthew. Sorry, Matthew is going to be reporting on the second speech by Phyllis. Over to you, Matthew. I can't say your own your name, even though it's the same as my last name. <laughs> All right, go yeah, ahead. Matthew. Those are difficult. Plurals, they get in the way, right? Phyllis. On behalf of uh, the other Toastmasters here, thank you for this speech. It was a delight to listen to. You had really strong vocal variety, including pauses. You had great eye contact. And you were also incredibly enthusiastic, which always helps to land a speech. There are four areas that I want to cover in my evaluation. The first one is the title, Who is Your Public? You actually asked several interesting questions in the first couple of minutes. You said, who is your public? And you said, how do you market to everyone and hit anyone? That's a great question. You also said, who do you want to attract? And I got to thinking, any of these could be potentially the title of your speech. Instead, I would actually encourage you to make the title of your speech a promise. So consider something like, gauge your audience to grow your club or something like that. That tells us more about why the topic is important because it is. The second area is your introduction. You started with an introduction talking about the statistics from Toastmasters International. Then you told us that they were unremarkable because they wouldn't work, which is sort of a rough throwaway of a use of the start of your speech. Instead, I would, cons I would have you consider something along the lines of something that you said a little later in the speech, which is you said, these are the same skills you can use to launch a business or talk about yourself or get into politics. You, you could even use it to get into a sell a product, for example, right? That is a remarkable way to start the speech. The third area is how I saw you, just wanted to cover. You had a great gesture, which was you started talking about car enthusiasts digging around in their motors. And it was really memorable because it was high. The framing of your camera, that your gestures were all kind of about chest level. And so because of the throw distance, they, a lot of them sort of looked like little waves kind of at the bottom of the screen. We could tell that you were excited and gesturing like crazy. And I so wanted to be able to tilt the camera down and, and see them. Anyway, so I guess gestures up or camera down or camera back or consider something because it's one of the things that makes you so remarkable as a speaker. And then the fourth and final area is content. I would encourage you to focus your speech, you talked about, for example, the Toastmasters International Statistics, the marketing author, the mechanic, and it's a lot to move through in five to seven minutes. I would have you consider making your points about, well, uh, to do all that, and then also make your points about assessing your club membership, so on and so forth. So I would encourage you to take your own advice and consider who is your public, who is the audience for this speech and make sure that there are clear calls to action. Give us a structure that has, for example, three changes you need to make today to understand your public and reach them. In summary, it's an incredibly appropriate topic. It's incredibly timely because we have people trying to reach 
their audience from afar, and there's broad interest in it as a marketing topic. So thank you for bringing it to us, and I am excited to see you continue to work on this speech so that you can share it further. Hey, thank you so much, Matthew. Wonderful, wonderful evaluation. And now it's time for me to take on the role of general evaluator and evaluate the whole meeting. So I'm going to do this in a in a chron in a chrono chronological order, starting with the pre-meeting. We had a lot of fun at the pre-meeting with our with our engagement of people coming in by asking where that we were from and using a little mentimeter there. I think we could have done even more engagement by actually saying hello to the new people as they came in individually and encouraging them to speak so and hopefully encouraging them to come off off of their come on camera so we could see them we love to see you all and it makes the meeting so much more fun when their people are here and we get that you can't always do that that's you can engage in whatever way works for you but we would love to encourage it at least and then we had the opening, which was really wonderful with uh, with PJ coming on and giving us some awards. Yay for us. So we got excited about how, how we're doing here at the club. That was a lot of fun. And then the Toastmaster came on and was great. And I think we maybe forgot to introduce the theme or if we said it, I missed it. So maybe making the theme a bigger deal and and talking about how we're flying in July. <laughs> or maybe we coordinate better, me and Jennifer, about who's going to do that. <laughs> and we coordinate as well about in, in encouraging our, our guests to speak. Uh, so then we had the, the speeches about YouTube and about knowing your audience. And both of those were wonderful. I love the I love that both of them sort of turned their heads in different directions and kind of moved in and out. And, and that was very engaging and brought us into the speech. And I want to, I want to get better at doing that myself. And even when I'm doing an evaluation, I can still do it. <laughs> All right. So then next we had, uh, we had our table, we had sort of a table topics where we were showing the page and did a popcorn style. It might have helped to, it was fun to engage everyone. And I, ho I hope next time we'll invite people, more people who are new to share thoughts they have. So that that's always great. I think that's one theme I have, like let's, let's work on bringing in our guests. We really want your participation. We care about you and we want you to be involved. So another thing that may have, may have helped with that is to give people an idea of how long they should speak for. That might, um, allow for more participation or maybe more in-depth participation if we want to allow a few people more time. We just need to decide like which one would work better. And that just might help with what people think about what they're going to what they're going to say. And then we had uh, Dear Peer or Masters, which was I always love that one. That's a lot of fun. Uh, giving giving ideas to and, and I love how Adam and In PR masters that other clubs don't have. And I think we could have also worked on explaining or share your page as well, because maybe some new people don't know what we're doing with that. So so for new people, for guests, it's good to explain, explain everything. It's possible we might even have people who aren't even Toastmasters and don't know ever know things about Toastmasters. So let's to sum up, I want to say I think we had a lot of fun and I want to invite us all to engage our guests even more than we have been doing. Thank you, everyone. And now, yay, thank you. Now I'm going to send it back to our timer. Emily, how did we do? Thank you. For evaluations, I had Bill at 257, Matthew 359. And Andrea's general evaluation report, 315. Thank you. And now, thank you. <laughs> thank you. 
And now it's time for Table Topics Master Joe to lead one word table topic. Joe. Thank you, Andrea. This was a historic day for the club, a brand new club. And as a new form of evaluation or another form of evaluation, I'm going to ask people for a one word summary of today's meeting, just one word. For example, I think tonight's meeting was auspicious. You can repeat someone's word and please be honest with your word. It doesn't have to be positive. We hope it is, but it doesn't have to be. And I'll call on people in the order they appear on my screen. So let me see. I will call on Daniel Brewer. What's your one word review of our meeting tonight, Daniel? Potential. Thank you. My word is potential. Great. Next up is Matthew, a one word review. Improving. Great. How about Bob? Do you have one word for us? Useful. Great. How about Timer Emily? Okay, we'll move on to Adam. What's your word, Adam? Fun. How about Marin? You're next on my screen. Encouraging. Great. How about Michael? Michael Rosenberg. Fun. Bye. Great. Thanks, Deanna. How about Elizabeth? Elizabeth Harris, what's your word? Inspiring. Great one. Good. Dahlia, do you have a word for us? Let's go with engaging. Good. Zeta, how about you? Exciting. PJ, our esteemed guest from the trio, what's your word? I found this meeting quite refreshing. Great. How about Lori, our other trio guest? Interesting. Thank you. Phyllis, one of our excellent speakers. What's your word? Thought provoking, two words. Hyphenated, so that counts. <laughs> Roger Cook, good to see you again. What's your word, Roger? Unbelievable. All right, Emily Taylor. Impact. Great. David, David Shehorn, what's your word? Challenging. Bill, one of our great evaluators, what's your word tonight? Stupendous. Excellent. Carissa, do you have a word for us? Happy. <laughs> you look happy. Good. Fred, Fred Bergeron, what's your word? Educational. Jim Robinson, another incoming member of the trio. What's your word? Recorded. <laughs> I was late, so I missed most of it. Oh, good. We'll be good viewing later. All right. How about Ann? Do you have a word for us? Informative. Great. Lori, are you still here? Do you have a word for us? I am still here. Oh, Sorry, what's your word? On my camera. <laughs> very, very informative. <laughs> Great, thanks. Chaz, one of our guests. Chaz, do you have a word? Yeah, informative. Okay, good. Francisca, are you still there? Good. Do you have a word for us, Francisca? Yes opportunity. Okay, good one. All right. Well, in consideration of time, I think I've gone a little over. So I'm going to send it back to our Toastmaster. 
Jennifer. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. My word would be ascending to go with this plane theme. We're flying high in July. That's the theme. At least it'll be at the end of the video. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea, Bill, Matthew, Emily, and everybody else who participated and attended our first PR Masters meeting. We always meet on the first Thursday of each month. Please sign up on EasySpeak and claim your role early. You could be Toastmaster in August. The only way we have a robust meeting is with your support. Also tell your friends all the fun we have and encourage them to join as well. The official meeting will end now, but you are more than welcome to stay and chat. Have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you all next month. Thank you. I ended a little early, three minutes. You did it. <laughs>